I'm Mikke Arvala and I'm going to show you how to implement uh, in-application purchases for a Java Midlet application. So basically you start by downloading and installing the SDK which is very simple uh, from the Nokia webpage and uh, after installing it uh, in your IDE I'm using uh, NetBeans 701 for this uh, example. So uh, when you create a new project in NetBeans you just select a new project, Java ME and mobile application. I'm creating a game called Battle Tank, so let's call my project that. So I enter a project name Battle Tank, and uh, otherwise I can go very much with the default values. And when you have installed the SDK, it will show up in the emulator platform selection. From the drop down menu, you just select Nokia SDK for Java. And for uh, device configuration and device profile, you can just use the default values CLDC 1.1 and MIDP 2.0. And then you just finish and you have a stop for your new project with one midlet called hellomidlet.java. And uh, in order to get your project to support in-application purchases, you must first uh, build and run it once to get access to the IAP simulator. The IAP simulator basically allows you to uh, test and debug your application without uh, having to talk directly to Nokia Store. So you can also use it uh, as a in a standalone fashion uh, without requiring access to the, to the internet. So let's first build this project. Okay, build was successful. And after that, you can just run the application. This will launch the Nokia Java, uh, Java simulator. Uh, when the emulator has started, you can see two windows. In the first one, you can see the actual uh, Nokia phone running your application. And uh, the other one is a diagnostic screen which shows your debug messages and net traffic and stuff like that. To access the IAP simulator, click on Tools and IAP Simulation. Uh, this will bring up the in-app simulator for the Nokia Java SDK. And uh, in this view you can see four tabs. So in the first phase uh, you see the general application details for your application. So let us create a new application for IAP. Let's call it the same name as our project, Battle Tank. And then you must also locate the application path for your application. Click Browse and then browse to the root folder of your application. And then you still need to give an application title which can be the same as the application name. And you can also choose whether you want to uh, test the application locally or if you want to use it with the Nokia published test server. But for the purposes of this example we will be testing locally which is the, most, uh, uh, the easiest way to go and to get started. We click Apply and then we move to the next tab. And here you will define the purchase items related to your application. And the example application we will be creating is a game which has only two levels by default. And by making a purchase in the application you can get access to more levels, 3, 4 and 5 in this case. In order to add a new IAP item, you will have to assign your application a product ID, which is a string of six numbers. You don't have to worry about the number at this point. You can just safely assign your project uh, six zeros, for example. And after that, you will give your project some uh, simple details, such as display name, short description, long description, and most importantly, you will select a global price point for which your application can be purchased at the store. So let's choose one euro. And then you can also define a purchase ticket, which is a token that gets assigned to your product after a successful purchase in Nokia Store. So let's just keep the default value and click Apply. Uh, then let's move to the third tab. And in this tab you can define which of your purchases that you just defined can be restored later. And uh, by default we will want you to be able to download the same things you have downloaded before when you, for example, use your Nokia account on a different device. By 
checking this checkbox here, you can uh, enable your application to be restored later. Then you click apply. The last tab specifies which items are going to be digitally protected. And the nice thing about DRM is that it works transparently, so you only have to define which items are going to be protected and the framework takes care of the rest. So we just uh, click on success and then our project is ready for in-app purchases. Now you can see some uh, IAP related files have been created in your project folder. Now when you navigate to the resources folder of your project, you can see that a directory called DRM has been created as well as a file called IAP underscore variant ID .txt. And uh, when you open this txt file, you can see it is just a placeholder containing six zeros. And this file will be assigned to your application ID later when you get one by publishing your application in the Nokia store. Also in the DRM directory, you can find a folder called data, under which there is a folder called resource ID underscore six zeros. And this folder is used to identify the files that are going to be digitally protected for your project. And now your application has been set up for in-app purchases.